Hello everyone, today we will step through the GSA tutorial documentation referencing the EN50522 standard. You can find this tutorial documentation in the tutorial documents link and the CAD files can be located in the XGIS Lab help desk. We will follow the GSA EN50522 tutorial for this video. First, let's go to the project information. And this is where you can enter in basic project information regard that can be automatically applied for your report. Here we can put in a name of the project as well as a short description, the customer's information, the designer, as well as the site location. Any information applied here will be incorporated into XGIS Lab's automated report. Next, we need to specify our reference standard. Following the tutorial, we will select EN50522. The next stage of this tutorial is to evaluate the soil conditions, which we have soil resistivity measurements, so we will go to the SRA tool. We can copy information from an Excel sheet and paste that into our analysis tool using the paste icon. Here we have a preview of our soil resistivity measurements. In following the tutorial documentation, we will specify the number of layers as two. Here we leave the average as none, weights checked, and constraints as default. Hitting the calculate, this will determine an approximate soil model with two layers and with an RMS value of 2.7%. Applying this, we can see we have a new results group box and we can view the soil model. Using this snap icon, this visual or the soil model plot will be saved for our automated reporting. The next step of our tutorial is to create our grounding system layout. In here, we can see we have a visual representation of our grounding system represented in red, the blue conductor representing an external tank, and if we look, we can see these block references or cells illustrating the ground rod locations. All of these will be imported into XGIS Lab. Going to the import icon, we will specify the directory of our file. We next need to specify the units that we will be importing. In this case, it's one centimeter. And then we will add the applicable layers that we need to evaluate. Here we are going to specify the e-grid layer. We'll define this as electrode one. Using a stranded conductor, we will go to a 63 millimeter square conductor and we need to shift the grounding system 0.7 meters into the earth. Next, we want to import the ground rods, so we will go back to the e-grid layer, specify electrode one, and then this time we will use a solid conductor type and navigate to the 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter rod. Using the tag name rod to give a little better description of that, we will also need to shift this 0.7 meters into the earth. And using this block name dropdown, we can specify the name of the block or the cell, as well as the length of our ground rods, which will be three meters in this instance. The final element that we need to import is the external tank, which we can navigate to the E tank layer Specify this as electrode 2 because it's a separate system, so it should have a separate electrode definition. We will use a solid conductor and specify this as number 10 following the tutorial documentation. Note we do not need to do a vertical shift because in the drawing it is already shifted into the earth. And finally, we want to import our background information or understand where our equipment is located. So using the civil works layer, we can specify that as a background and importing that as a background allows us to visualize that layer without evaluating or considering that in our calculations. Hitting the import icon, we can import this grounding system on all of that conductors. And this will be evaluated or visualized in the XGL CAD view. Here we can zoom in and tilt our view to illustrate that our grounding system, all the conductors, our ground rods, and this external tank have all been imported into our model. Next, we need to energize our system, and in GSA, we can use this energization icon. We will specify the type of energization as a current, 
and specify 5000 amps according to the tutorial documentation and hit the green check mark to save that. This is going to be a preliminary evaluation so that we can evaluate the grid impedance to be used for our split factor calculations. Next we will hit the debug and compute icon. This will verify that no conductors are overlapping from our CAD model and that our anodizations can be appropriately considered in this model. With that, our analysis completes. We have a new analysis tab and going to the GPR unearthing impedance icon, we can see 5000 amps is entered into electrode 1 and we have an impedance of 0.24 ohms. Going back to the project tab, split factor, we will enter in this 0.24 ohms, assuming 5000 amps is sourced from a 110 kV line, we will specify the fault current and its drainage factor that is supplied in the tutorial documentation. Hitting calculate, we can see that of that 5000 amps, only 3395 will be going through our grounding system producing the ground potential rise or earth potential rise. Next we will evaluate the conductor sizing. Here as following the tutorial documentation, we have a single line ground fault of 5000 amps with a half second clearing time, a phase to phase to ground fault of 25 Ka with 0.35 second clearing time, and the K value we can evaluate with either a 1 indicating the single conductor from the equipment to our ground grid and calculate the minimum conductor crossing or conductor size, or we can specify 0.6 to indicate the split factor that occurs for the ground grid mesh. And this will indicate a minimum conductor sizing of 52 millimeters squared. Next, we will specify our touch and step voltage criteria, and we simply need to enter in our fault current clearing time, hit the calculate, and this will give our touch and step voltage criteria as uh, perspective values as you can see here as well. Applying that, this will be used for our evaluation. Because we have entered in a new energization, we need to hit the debug and compute once again to recalculate the ground potential rise for our grounding system. Here we see we have the analysis tab again, going to the GPR and earthing impedance. This table, we can actually rename the electrode as substation and tank to give a better description corresponding to the electrode systems. And we can see 3,395 uh, amps is entered as the current for our energization, resulting in an 825 volt ground potential rise or earth potential rise. Here we can look at the leakage current of our system as well. And zooming in, we can specify a new view by using this plus check mark. So if I zoom in, hit the plus check mark, I can specify this as a top XY zoomed view. And this can be used for our area calculations. Following the tutorial documentation, we can specify our area calculation and we will specify exactly the same coordinates as x equals 0, y with negative 10, and z at 0 with a length of 100 meters and a width of 80 meters and calculate. This means that XGS Lab will calculate the Earth's surface potentials at every point as specified in our area calculation. This is what's used to calculate the touch and step voltage, touch and step voltages, as well as the GPR earth potential rise. Hitting the view on our earth potential group box, we can see a top down view of our earth potential. We can also see that there's a snap or capture icon here, and this will be saved for our automated report. We can use the 3D icon and view once again, and this will provide us as a with a three-dimensional illustration 
of our earth potential rise or our ground potential rise. Finally, we want to evaluate our touch and step voltages. So we can specify the electrode reference and then hit view on the safe areas. Note that we have specified the touch and step voltages. We could also specify the prospective touch and step voltages if desired. Seeing the plot, we can see that most of this area is illustrated in green, indicating that we are within the touch and step voltage criteria or within compliance of those values. We can use the snap icon to save this image of the safe areas. We can also plot a touch voltage without the association for our compliance criteria. And we can specify contours or levels when we're plotting these touch or step voltage values. Here we are plotting the step voltages with contours or lines illustrating the different voltage levels. This information is saved in the gallery, which we can see here. And if you hit the report, this will illustrate all of that information is captured into our automated XGIS lab report, incorporating the solar resistivity model, the ground potential rise, and the values that we have specified, which can be exported out to various formats. The final portion of our tutorial is specifying a line calculation. Here, we will just draw a line, hit calculate, and then we will need to specify the electrode reference as substation, and then we can plot our line calculation. Note our maximum threshold for touch voltages may be much higher, so we will need to scale our maximum values to be more visually illustrative. Thank you everyone for following along with this GSA tutorial for the EN50522.